In International Harvest, the Lord has supreme, supreme reign. It, it is, is a, a church where I am taught and, and instructed in the ways of God. I will apply God's Word in my everyday life. And as a result of that application, there will be a transformation. At, At International, International Harvest, Harvest, I will, I will be, be cultivated, cultivated to grow and, and empowered to go as, as the Spirit of God enables me. The world that I live in shall be changed. My home, school, my workplace shall not be the same because of Jesus the Christ working in me and through me. Amen and amen. Welcome to International Harvest Christian Fellowship Church. Your word of the day is, one song can change a moment, one idea can change a world, one step can change a journey, but a prayer can change the impossible. And now for your morning announcements. Remember, all in-house activities are canceled, but you still have an opportunity to stay connected. Join us on Monday and Wednesday for our prayer conference line. The number is 916-233-0790. The access code is 725-768. Bible study will be held on Wednesday night using the Zoom app. In order to participate, you will need to download the app. Step-by-step -step instructions and a video tutorial is available on our website. Just in case you missed it, please note, your children have an opportunity to stay connected as well. Children's church lessons for both preschool and grade school are available each week under the Watch Online tab. Because of your generous donations, we were able to provide meals and snacks to the Union Gospel Mission and the Presbyterian Night Shelter. So don't stop giving. Every penny counts. God loves a cheerful giver. Pay your tithes and offering online. Visit the website and click the donate tab. You can also text your donation to 817-435-4447. And now, let's take a look at a few fellowship shout outs. Good morning, International Harvest Christian Fellowship Church, family and friends. Brendan and I would like to take this time to say hello, to give you a holy shout out, a holy wave and wish you all well and uh be safe yes please be safe and i like to say hello to my hospitality folks and and wish you all well and as well as the rest of the congregation i miss you guys and hopefully we'll see each other soon yes once again take care stay safe god bless jesus is number one amen in honor of Easter, we asked a few of our kids to share the true meaning of what Easter is all about. Easter is the day we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, the day the stone rolled away and he rose from the dead. Easter to me is just having a good time with your family and friends and getting to celebrate the sacrifice that Jesus made for us on the cross. What Easter means to me is the resurrection of Jesus Christ and it's a time to celebrate time with your family and friends. What Easter is really about is God saving our souls. Easter means being with your family and hunting for the eggs, the people you love, and thank you for Jesus dying on the cross. God goes on adventures. Um, God goes on many daring adventures. And in Easter, you go Easter hunting and you find eggs. That's kind of like um, doing the same thing as going on dating like events Easter with eggs. God. That concludes our announcements for the week. Thank you so much for listening. Have a blessed day and a happy Easter. grateful for what Jesus did for you. Can you lift your hands and begin to worship the Lord in this room? If you're really grateful for a sacrifice, if you know there's no one else that could have did it for you, come on and give him praise.
about a savior that came from glory. How he gave his life at Calvary. He did it all just for me. They nailed him in his hands. They nailed him in his feet. They Yeah. 
Well, praise the Lord, saints. Uh, what a wonderful time it is. Another opportunity to celebrate Resurrection Sunday. And I want to personally uh, welcome you uh, to International Harvest as we prepare, amen, to study the word today. Our scripture uh, comes from Galatians chapter uh, 5, beginning with verse 1. One verse only. And it simply says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And I want to unpack this verse of Scripture this morning as we walk through this aspect of the reality of the resurrection, the reality of the resurrection. Let's look unto the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and honor you for another opportunity to come together to study the word of God, the bread of life. And while we are yet, Father God, separated, Father, physically, we are united spiritually. And we just declare, Father God, even now, that you rule and reign and that you are still seated on the throne. And we welcome your presence, Father God, as we open the word of God and break the bread of life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, beloved, once again, let me wish you a happy Resurrection Sunday, which, of course, you know that it is a time of celebration, a, a time of commemoration, and most of all, it's a time of remembrance, a time of remembrance because of what Jesus said when he partook of the covenant meal during the Last Supper. And during that covenant meal, he said, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup of the new covenant, which represent his broken body and his blood that was shed for us, that we were to do so in remembrance of him. In other words, what I have done, I want you to remember that. Amen. Remember the effects and the reality of what I have done for you. And as I contemplate or, or ponder the effects of the resurrection this morning, I often wonder if believers really understand the reality, the liberty, and the freedom of what comes with so great a victory. Ah, oh, glory to God. Somebody say victory this morning. Somebody type or post the word victory in their comments block. And as we, we, we look at our text this morning, we find that the Apostle Paul writes to remind the church at Galatia this very thing, that they have the victory, that they have been blood bought and that the resurrection or the power of the resurrection that was wrought through Jesus Christ has been given to every believer. Amen. And he has set us free and released us from the works of darkness. Amen. Stand fast, therefore, Paul says. He says, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And I believe that, that, that every now and then, all of us from time to time have to be reminded that we are blood-bought. That we are surrounded, if you will, by a blood barrier. That, 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 that we are not our own. That there is an expectation by God, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, that we must glorify him. In spirit, soul, and body, which belongs to him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so as we, as we look at the backdrop of Paul's writings this morning, he writes because there were those who had crept into the church with false teachings. Amen. And these false teachers argued that it was necessary to practice the law in order to sure up salvation. And several, several of the members at Galatia 
who were, who were, who were known for their indecisiveness, who were known, amen, for their inconsistency, who were known for their uh, vacillations, if you will, decided to go back to the ways of Judaism. They decided to go back to worldliness, back to what they were familiar with, all of which were contrary to the concepts of godliness. And uh, it's, it's interesting to me it's interesting to me that, that sometimes we can be so conditioned by a particular habit or hang-up or bondage that whenever the enemy want to control us, that's what he uses to lure us away from God and his principles. Forever rattling his chains and dragging us back to bondage. And so while, amen, we recognize through the text that the saints at Galatia were bound by doctrinal error. A more sobering question for us this morning is what source or what habit, amen, or what is the source of our habits are we bound by? What mindsets, what conditions, what do we struggle with that hinders us from freely experiencing the reality or the liberty and the freedom of the power of the resurrection. I'm talking about that power, that authority that Christ granted us when he conquered death through the grave. Oh, glory to God. And so Paul's message back then is still relative to us today. Because uh, uh, today he still says, beloved, stand fast in the liberty wherewith you are called. Stand fast wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again onto the yoke of bondages. And so the word stand fast here has a very significant meaning. It, it, it literally means to be alert. It, 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 it means to be firm. It means to be aggressive. It means to persevere. To stand fast means to leave no room for passivity. Why? Why? Because there will be seasons when the enemy will try to come back and lure us again into bondage. Amen. I, I, I'm reminded even now that after Jesus had gone into the desert to be tempted by Satan. Luke chapter 4 and verse 13 says that when Jesus was finished being tempted, the enemy departed for a season. Amen. That, that means that he, he wasn't gone, amen, uh, 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 for a, a, a period of time. He, he, I mean, he was coming back rather. That's why we can't play with the devil. Amen. Once God has delivered us from our sources of bondage, whatever that might be, you can't dilly-dally. Amen. I know people don't like those slang words, but you can't play with the devil. You can't tinker with the devil. Amen. You can't tinker with anything that God has delivered you from. I'm, you know, in the Gospels, uh, Jesus used to tell those who he loosed from bondage, amen, he used to tell them all the time, go and sin no more, lest another thing come upon you. That's why the scriptures remind us today to, to stand fast. Where are we to stand fast? In bondage? God forbid. He says to stand fast in liberty, wrought through the resurrection power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, the word liberty here signifies a complete work. Amen. It, it, it's a complete work. It's a work that has, 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 has uh, 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 taken care of us wholly, spirit, soul, and body, and once and for all. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Verse 23, he, he says that you are bought with a price. Do not become the slaves of men. 
Well, I like to, if we're not to become the slaves of men, I want to toss this in just for good measure. Neither should we be, amen, slaves of men, but we don't need to be slaves to habits. We shouldn't be slaves to hang-ups or, or different mindsets. We, we, we shouldn't be slaves. Why? Because we've been delivered. In other words, experience the reality of the resurrection because Christ has spiritually emancipated us. Oh, glory to God. Now, in the natural, I love to study African-American history. I love to dig into the backgrounds of our culture because it gives me as an African-American man insight as to what I've been liberated from. Amen. And having that knowledge gives me stamina. It, it gives me passion. It gives me drive to go after opportunities that my forefathers and my foremothers did not have. Well, first natural, then spiritual. In order for us to walk in this spiritual liberation or this spiritual liberty that Christ has provided us, we must understand what we've been liberated from. Amen. Amen. You can't figure out where you're going until you figure out where you've been. Amen. In Christ, we have been given the right to walk fully delivered. That's what resurrection power is all about. In Christ, we've been given the right to be fully and completely healed. That's the reality of resurrection power power. In Christ, we've been given the right to be totally set free from all yokes and all bondages. That is the reality of resurrection power. This is our inheritance. You got to learn how to own this. Amen. This is our inheritance. This is our spiritual rights because we've been bought with a price and we are not our own. Whew. Now, in the natural, we have come to understand that if you don't know or if you don't understand your rights, you can be taken advantage of. Well, be beloved, as a believer, because of Christ, because of what he did at Calvary over 2,100 years ago, because, amen, the, the borrowed tomb is empty today. The scriptures reveal that we have a legal right to walk in the reality of Christ's resurrected power. And I need you to get this today. I need believers all in the land to understand the source of their freedom and the source of their liberation. In other words, Jesus has legally and spiritually emancipated us from the yoke of the bondage of sin and all its effects. This is not just something that we do. This celebration is not just something that we do once a year. It's something that we ought to possess, something that we ought to walk in every single day to the believer. Resurrection power is every day. It just takes the world, amen, to acknowledge it once a year. And we have the opportunity to share its reality. And so if a person decides to go to hell after this word today, it won't be for the lack of understanding. Because, because I'm instructing you in how not to go. Proverbs 4 and 7 says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. But in all thy getting, get an understanding. There's nothing like having an informed decision. So let me inform you. First of all, the Lord, through his word, informs us. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned, all. That's everybody. For all have sinned and fallen short 
of the glory of God. And what that means, beloved, is that all of us are affected by this spiritual sickness called sin. It's hereditary. Amen. Amen. And nobody, I mean, nobody is exempt, amen, from its infection. The Lord tells us in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, he says, For the wages of sin is death, uh, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. That, that's what it says. That's what it says in the book. And I like what the A portion of this verse says. It tells us that this spiritual sickness called sin comes with a wage. Amen. And uh, the word wage here is translated from the Greek word opsonion. Opsonion. And opsonion has to do with the, ra the rations of a Roman soldier's pay. It's better translated a stipend. And so in other words, there is a paycheck or a stipend that comes with sin, and that stipend is called death. Amen. And I want you to understand that the word death here doesn't mean that you die like a dog and that's it. The word death here, amen, is not to be confused with the meaning of ceasing to exist. Amen. I need you to understand that, that, that God created humanity as eternal beings. And so because of sin, the word death here has a more severe impact. And that impact impacts each and every one of us eternally. It literally means eternally separated from God. You cannot separate from your source and expect to live. Amen. This death is a word that means that we are eternally separated from our life source. And that life source is God. But pastor, what does that mean? Amen. What, what, what does that mean? Well, let, let, let's take a look. Let's, let's look in the word. Let's see what the Lord has to say about this word death, this type of death. Amen. Revelations 20 verse 10 says this, and the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire, the brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are also, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now don't turn me off yet. Amen. Hang on in there. Hang on in there. Second Thessalonians Chapter 1, verse 7 through 9 says, says, says this, uh, when the Lord Jesus returns, he will be revealed from heaven with all of his mighty angels. Verse 8 says, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9 says, these shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, these will pay the penalty of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. What am I doing? I'm defining what type of death, uh, amen, that we've been liberated from. In Matthew's gospel, Matthew, the 25th chapter, in verse 41, Jesus is teaching about the day of judgment. He's talking about what the day of judgment would be like. And here he says that there will be a separation. The sheep on the right hand and the goat on the left. And then he says that the Lord will say to those on his left, Depart from me, ye that are cursed, into eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. But then in verse 46, he says, these will go away in eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Hebrews chapter 6, y'all hang on in there with me, amen. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 2 speaks of the resurrection of the eternal judgment. Mark chapter 9 verses 44 through 48, amen, Jesus is teaching. 
And in this teaching, he three times, three times he, he speaks of a literal place for those that reject his righteousness. And in that place, he says, their worm or their soul does not die and the fire is not quenched. John chapter 5, verse 28 through 29, Jesus says, do not marvel at this. He says, the hour is coming in which all who are in the grave will hear his voice and will come for those who have done good to a resurrection of life and those who have done evil to a resurrection of condemnation. Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, Daniel writes, Many of those who sleep in the dust of the ground will awake, these to eternal life, but the others to disgrace and everlasting contempt. Now, I, I understand it's, 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 it's Resurrection Sunday. I, I get it. I really do. And let me address the elephant in the room here. None of these scriptures that I've read in your hearing build hope. But I want you to know that they are not written to build hope, they are written to reveal reality. What you have heard in the word of God is a reality of what happens when people reject the love of God. It's a reality. Amen. It's like coronavirus. It doesn't care if you're rich or poor. Amen. It affects everybody. They are written to reveal reality. Somebody say reality. They are written to reveal the truth about the condition of a fallen soul. But thanks be to God. God who loved us so much would not allow us to endure this life without hope. Somebody say hope. Glory to God. Woo! Ah! So he did something about our condition. All oh, glory to God. And what he did was he provided us hope. And it's found in the reality of the resurrection of Christ. Well, you might say, Pastor, what does this reality look like? Amen. Let me give you four points. And I'm going to let you go. Amen. Number one, he says he paid the penalty. Amen. He paid the penalty. He paid the debt for our sins in its entirety and its fullness. The old songwriter said he saved us from the utmost to the gutmost. In other words, in his body, he bore our sins. And not only our sins, but the sins of the entire world that we might have forgiveness. And in our sin, that, that, that those sins would be charged to Jesus Christ's account. Amen. The Bible says that he was the perpetuation for our sins. That means that, that he was the atonement. Amen. He was the atonement for God's wrath against us. Remember, I told you that that stipend called death had to be paid for. And this is what Jesus did when he went to Calvary. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24 says this, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. Oh, glory to God. Number two. Number two, he obliterated. Amen. I like that word. He, he, he obliterated, amen, the power of sin by paying the ransom so that all of humanity could be free, so that all of humanity could be discharged or, or liberated or released from the slavery to sin. Second Corinthians chapter 5 Verse 21 said, for he has made him, that's God, God has made him, that's Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Number three, amen. Number three, he removed the pollution of sin by making us clean through his blood. Colossians, Colossians chapter 2. 
verse 13 through 15. Paul writes, he said, and you being dead in your sins and uncircumcised in your flesh, has he quickened. Woo. Glory to God. The word quickened there means he's made alive. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to read that again. And you, that means you and me, plural, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all of your trespasses. There ain't nothing that you've ever done, nothing that you ever will do that Christ can't forgive. And the 14th verse, I, I like this. I like this because not only has he forgiven us of our trespasses, but verse 14 says he blotting out the handwritten ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. In other words, he removed the charges. Amen. He removed, amen, all of the things, amen, that we were guilty of. He blotted it out at the cross with the power of his blood. And then he went down, amen, and preached to those that were in captivity. And he triumphed over the devil in what he had done. Glory to God. This is the reality, whoo, ah, glory of the resurrection. And finally, number four. Number four, he destroyed the hedge of sin. In order that we might be reconciled unto God. Now, hedge is something that keeps us out. But Jesus came and he destroyed it. And he put us back in right relationship with the Father, giving us the opportunity to never again be separated from God. Ephesians 2, verses 13 through 14 says this. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of petition between us. What Jesus did at Calvary and what he did when he got out of the grave broke down that petition that was separating humanity between God and man. And so the only thing that separates us from God now is a decision. What will you do with what Christ did at Calvary? That's why Paul writes, if your decision goes well, if you make a decision for Christ, amen, and accepting all that he did, then Paul rejoices by writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Verse 55 through 58, he says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? He says, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which has given us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, my brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abiding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know, that your labor is not in vain. And so that, beloved, that is the reality of the power of the resurrection. Amen. We who at one time were afar off, but now we have been drawn nigh by the blood of Jesus. That's why Paul writes this word for us today. That's why he reminds us in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, to stand fast in the liberty, in the resurrective reality where Christ has made us free. All oh, glory to God. Come on, let's look unto the Lord. I hope you were blessed this morning. A reminder that we are liberated. We are emancipated because of the resurrection of Jesus and it shouldn't be taken lightly Father in the name of Jesus we thank you 
for another opportunity to hear the word of God. And I want to say on behalf of those of us all over the land, thank you. Thank you for not leaving humanity to ourselves. For even the word says that a child left to himself comes to destruction. But I thank you, Lord, that you had not left us to ourselves, but you gave us access through the shedding of our Lord and Savior's blood, Jesus Christ. And he has resurrection power that pulled us into a place where we could have relationship with you. We bless you today. We honor you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you're watching today and Maybe you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I was very clear and very plain in the word that God gave me today in terms of uh, a decision that all of us must make as it relates to our eternal soul. The Bible says, he that has Christ, amen, have life. And he that have not Christ, have not life. Let me encourage you with everything that is within me. To choose Christ. In choosing Christ, you choose life. Say this prayer with me, Father, in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I can't save myself. I heard the word of God today that gave me instructions as to why I am separated. But Lord, I have a word of hope. And that hope is that Jesus died for my behalf. And I ask Jesus, Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life. Save me from this untoward generation. Be Lord over my life. Lead me. Guide me. For your word says, if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart, the Lord Jesus Christ, that God has raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. And I thank you, Father, that I confess that he is Lord and ask that he would come into my life and be my God, and I will be his child. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise the Lord. It has been an honor to celebrate Resurrection Sunday with you. Uh, we wish, amen, you the best as you unite with your families all over the world. Amen. Celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and and to our church family, we want to say to you that we love you and we so dearly miss you. And we want to thank you for the love that you have shown through your giving. Amen. We were able to go down to the Union Gospel Mission uh, this past week and deliver uh, groceries to those that are less fortunate. Amen. As well as to offer a donation to our community link, which is the food bank. People are struggling all over the land. And this is the time for the church, amen, to open their hearts to share the love of Christ. And so I thank you, church family. Thank you. You are such a blessing. And that your love and your offerings and your gifts, amen, are making an impact for Jesus Christ. And so we give God all of the praise. We give him all of the glory. In Jesus' name, thank God for you. Continue to be cultivated to grow and empowered to go. God bless you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Thank you.